Welcome back to the Country People in Boyd. We have a show for you. We're going to have a border at the top. We're also going to talk about dream debuts, sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe bad. And let's start Let's start at the top. Let's start with Real Madrid and Real Sociedad because we're really hyping up this game, but it's fair to say Ramiro made this game not a masterclass. Yeah, Ramiro had probably his best goalkeeping performance I've seen from him because He's a goalkeeper that, well, yes, he's quite good. He has some mistakes in him, but he was absolutely flawless on Sunday. And I think the best way to describe this match from a Madrid perspective was Tony Chris's tweet after a match. I was like, great game, wrong result. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we have to give fair play to Real Sociedad because they went into this week um, with the big games against Madrid and Barcelona. They had the, they had the news that David Silva was going to make it for Barcelona mm. and, or for Madrid and Marino has been out and yet they still they still come out looking good because in the Barcelona game they got a red card and um, they had to play most of the game with 10 men and they only lost 1-0 to Barcelona while here they got a very valuable point against Real Madrid that keeps them strong in the table and it's much credit to what Emmanuel is doing because 39 points, this is probably the second best Real Sociedad return in the 21st century. And yeah. their team who you can list out their injury list and like it creates like a world-class team or a very good team. And they still find a way to get these results. And what do you think about them for next season if they do make Champions League? Has this made you more... Um, more sure about their performance for next season. Uh, yeah, like you can see that the seeds for a successful future have been planted, not just with the um, star players they have, but like with the kids coming through. Like you have Pablo Marin, Navarro and the like. Um, they can all come in and do a job because um, Russo said that now is not about one player or two players playing well. It's about an idea and everyone is I'm carrying out the idea to absolute perfection. Yeah, and they're almost the perfect team because their team, like if if you're a fan of a club, right, and you're a fan of a club that, let's say they don't really have that much money, the billions, billion owner, like in a city or Chelsea, and you want them to compete, like this is the way you want it to compete because it's like mm-hmm. a very local team, lots of young players from the Basque region, but very smart signings and. And it, we talk about the fact that they don't have Sadiq yet. Uh, they haven't had Cho in a while. Silva has gone. Marino has gone. Bright, uh, yeah, no Bryce played. But it's the fact that all these players coming together can make them such a strong team. And you can see this team growing over and over again, even if they sell one or two players to invest in the squad. But I, I'm, I'm really liking what I see from them. Yeah, definitely. And... Their team, that I think if they wanted to keep some players from being sold next in, they could easily do that too. So, yeah, yeah the future is looking really bright for them. And I think we've passed the stage of the season where they had their usual slump. <laughs> you think that with nine or ten players out, that it will have happened by now, but no, they keep going strong. And yeah, I think they're well on course for top four. Yeah, but the one worry I have for them, right, is because they have this big injury list, and I worry that what happened to Sevilla, I think some what happened to them, where after Sevilla last season, where they get to the Europa League, and because they're now playing Thursday, Sunday, every single week, that drains the ability of the squad substantially. In the Champions League next season? No, in the Europa League this season. In the Europa League this season, because they're playing Thursday, Sunday, and... I guess maybe it's a good thing that they're not going to play the round of 32 and they're mm-hmm. just moving to the round of 16. But that Thursday, Sunday um, fixture list, how do you think it would, would affect them? Well, if they don't get some players back soon, it will definitely hamper them a bit. So from their point of view, they'd be hoping Silva and um, Marino in particular come back soon. And they would hope that Los Thunder's injury on Sunday isn't too serious. Yeah, we would hope that. But like there were two teams playing, and let's talk about Real Madrid, who they dropped points in this game. They were looking to build up after that win in, in the Madrid derby in the Copa del Rey, but uh, they ran to Wolves surprisingly. Like 
what do you think of their performance in this in this game and how do you think they can build on from that i think they were very very good in this game i can't tell you like it's probably their best game since they came back from the world cup but they didn't score <laughs> that's just the irony of football sometimes like Vinicius Jr., for instance, had a great game up until the finish. It was like watching 2020 Vinicius and it felt good. <laughs> yeah, it's not just him. Sarlot also had a disaster class up front when it came to finishing. Yeah, Sarlot yeah. and the Copa del Rey too was somewhat of a disaster class. Yeah, he, he felt, I was like, he's been on a roll recently and then he just return, regress back to the mean, the poor guy. <laughs> Yeah, but it seems like every every single attacker who plays Ter Stegen has a bad day. Like, the misses are horrible. <laughs> yeah, like some of the misses. Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. But yeah, I feel like for Real Madrid, they just have to keep trying to... Um, they have to build on his performance, definitely, because um, the likes of Ceballos and Camavinga have come to the team are uh, doing really well. So they just have to continue and see what sticks. Yeah. Especially uh, Kamavinga because he's been playing more uh, as a left back. <laughs> Is he a better left back than Mendy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's no coincidence that as Kamavinga is playing at left back and he's actually supporting Vinicius, that Vinicius looks more dangerous. Granted, it depends on the right back Vinicius is playing against, but still. Um, Vinicius generally looks more of a threat when he has a left back supporting him. So, I don't, but it seems I don't know if Kamavinga there is going to be a permanent thing because Alaba will be back soon. And is out for like a month, so we'll see how that evolves. Yeah, we'll see how that evolves. In the Copa del Rey, Real Madrid will be playing Barcelona, and Barcelona made it. They took advantage of this of this slip up. They made it a five point gap at the top of the table, and Pedri gets in the goal. And Oscar, every time I look at Barcelona now, I just see binary scores. <laughs> I don't have Atletico Madrid in disguise. Honestly, you know, I used to make fun of the league sometimes for having binary numbers and being like, "Oh, Javi's men will save us from binary numbers with a four nil win or something." But those four nil wins seem. Like, they are going to come anytime soon. Oh, <laughs> given, right. No, given that we have a tough run coming up. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I like that the team is able to find ways to win, even though they don't have Lewandowski and Ferran and Dembele is injured now for a month. Yeah, that would be a tough blow for them, especially when you consider the fact that they're going to play Real Betis midweek and... How 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 do you think Lewandowski coming back for that game against Betis because he'll be back against Betis would affect the way this team plays going forward? It would definitely. I mean, it can only be a good thing having the <laughs> top scorer in the league. But the only thing is, um, I wonder how we're going to adjust to Dembele being absent. Like, we definitely need someone else to step up in terms of performances and. If possibly goals, because yeah. while we got through against Girona, Fatih and, and Rafinha's performances <laughs> filled me with fear and dread. <laughs> yeah, no, no, when they're doing things like slipping when they're about to shoot, it it, it makes a guy worry. <laughs> Especially when you consider the fact that Dembele had such a he had such a great month. He was been he scored that goal against Atletico Madrid. Hmm. Um, Jota Jordi from El Chiringuito said that he had a better game than Mbappe has ever had. <laughs> it is rough to say that. Big words for him, but um, like he he's been he's been really good and he's been like super important for Barca. Even though Barcelona has been they've had a drop in form, a drop of performance recently, and I feel uh, the performance in Saudi Arabia sort of masked the fact that we haven't seen the best Barcelona so far. This yeah. I, before that Saudi Arabia game, I was thinking, I'm like, why is it that we only play well for like 30 minutes and then we kind of drop off? And I was thinking, I'm like, out of all the La Liga teams during the World Cup break, we're the only one that didn't have any sort of friendly because we had a lot of players at the World Cup. So I'm like, could it just be a case of us having our own form of World Cup hangover? 
and maybe it's just taking us a while to get back to ourselves before the World Cup. Huh? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe we play well against Betis and I, I'm like, okay, there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I guess the good thing for Barcelona is that Real Madrid usually struggled during this time during this time period. Like during mm-hmm. January last season, we saw them struggle in the league, but afterwards it was like Sevilla couldn't take advantage of it. But now you have a Barcelona who's getting results and can take advantage of that. Yeah, it's important. To, it's important to capitalize on each slip up you can get because it's still a long season. Like we could have. Um, a down moment too, but if this is a down moment and we're still getting results, then you can't be positive, eh? Yeah, it can be positive. And in the Copa del Rey, it's going to be Barcelona, Real Madrid. Um, how do you see that going? It's going to be end of February we're going to get that game. To be honest, I'd rather play them in a final than the two-off game because their ability to come back. <laughs> but, but the good thing is that they pl- we're playing in their home first, so... They won't have that second leg boost from the home crowd. So, yeah, I don't know. It depends on who's fit for both teams, really. It's, this one is too early to call, even though we absolutely battered them last time. <laughs> but, yeah, I had to say that. But um, anything can happen. So, we'll just hopefully we get there in good condition and beat them up again. <laughs> well, that's about that. Um, I have a question. As Ter Stegen consulted a witch doctor, he is, he is, I told you, Bruce, his hairline. <laughs> how, how do players keep on missing these chances in front of him? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, um, the Sarlot one. I mean, the Sarlot one, I, I don't think it has anything to do with Ter Stegen because he, he messed up against Courtois too. So <laughs> I think that one is on Sarlot. As for Ivan Martin. I don't know how he didn't score, <laughs> but yeah. you know I'm glad he didn't score. Sure, sure. And and there's bad news for you because are now who you really like in Girona. The rumors he might go to Atletico. Uh, you win some, you lose some. I mean, it's not like we can even. I don't even know what's going on with the whole registration thing and everything. I'm like, I'm just focused on what the team is doing on the pitch. And hopefully the rest will sort itself out. Yeah, the rest will sort itself out. But for Barcelona, the next game they have is against Real Betis. And Betis, they scored for the first time in the Coliseum since 2018. Really? Betis needed, yeah, he needed a late goal. And you know something crazy about that? The last time before 2018 they scored was in 2013. Okay, because yeah. both teams were in second division at various points. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so what was the result of this game last season? 0-0. Zero, zero. And the season it... score was 3-0 to Atafe. Oh, yeah, I remember at 3-0. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Kukuria scored and did, did show these boxes in a celebration. That was weird. Yeah. yeah. But, but for this game, though, I, I, was, I, I was worried it was going to be a 0-0. Zero, zero. But there's a trend in La Liga this season where it's like, we get less 0-0s, zero, zero, but like we always get the 1-0. So I was like, there's going to be a goal scored. I don't know by who. And it turns out it was Betis who got the penalty. I felt that was a harsh penalty. Yeah, it's a bit harsh. Because while he does, he's bringing his arm up. It's like, I feel it's a natural movement. And the ball is basically like a rebound. And the ball comes from very close. Yeah, it's pretty harsh, if you ask me. Yeah, it's pretty harsh, and um, I hope it doesn't do any harm to Paul Kike because Kike Setien, uh, not Setien, uh, <laughs> Kike Sanchez Flores, my bad. We're, yeah. We'll get to Kike Setien too. <laughs> Kike Sanchez Flores, because he's done a, such a good job with Atafe from last season. I remember when he came in and he rescued them. And now with um, Katafe this season, they're doing okay, but it's just, I don't know, they, they're missing something. Yeah, it's been kind of disappointing after I, out of most people, hyped up their transfer window. Um, I I don't know. I think it might be... I think Kike Sanchez Suarez could be braver in his approach sometimes. Yeah. But I feel like of all the signings they made, 
the only ones that wasn't really thrilled about what the le- what the replacements for Oliveira and the fact that they ha- they've had to play right back in Juan Iglesias there kind of tells the story. So hmm. yeah, it really does. They're linked with um, Boca Juniors' Barco, but we'll see whether that they can get that over the line. Hmm. Yeah, and with Betis, the the have to compete with Atletico Madrid for the top four spot. Atletico Madrid, it was better call Saul. I've been waiting to say this for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> How long? Uh, I don't know. Since like twenty eighteen, it this this hasn't been relevant. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but but it was good. It was good for him though. Like it it was a well taken goal. It was a very good goal. The pass from De Paul was world class. The cast and it's like I was like, who was that? I was like, this was possibly Morata. And I see Salsa where I'm like, you you scored that? <laughs> <laughs> it was a striker's finish. Yeah. It was a very confident finish from a player that hasn't looked confident in years. So yeah, it was good for Sal to get that goal. Yeah. I was thinking immediately that, oh, okay, this is kind of like trying to com- com- um, convince Valencia to sign him, but then we'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. But th- I'll, I'll say the thing for Atletico is that Atletico have been really good since the World Cup break. Um, Barn, like they had bad results against Barca and Madrid, but I, I don't think even in those games they played really well. And in this game, I felt it was a very intense hand head to head game like between both of them and Osasuna. Osasuna they're fire and thunder whenever they play, so this was like quite fun. But it's just the finishing with Atleti, like that <laughs> that's really letting them down. Yeah. These guys couldn't hit a binder sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I was going to say, um Atleti, I agree with you that Atleti have been better than they were before the World Cup. The results haven't always been there, but you can see that, that the mood has changed a bit. Yeah. Although now, the only team left to play for is top four, which will be kind of disappointing. But it's still something to play for. Yeah, and, and I'll say if you're in this season, if you're in this um, conundrum like Atleti is, the best thing for you to do is just use this as a preseason almost for next season. In True. that, try things, experiment things, like work on a system, like use that to like train the players. And I think that's the good thing if you're a team that's, let's say, out of the Champions League or out of Europe, it's that you have that week to like really train and to really like build your systems up and to really um, get that level of playing that you want to. Because what we've seen with Atletico in the last two seasons is that they're without the system, they're without the style, you don't know what they're playing, you don't know whether four three it's four three three, it's a four four two, it's a three five two. Mm-hmm. They don't know their best formation, they don't know what the best eleven is. And now that they have some time, maybe they can build that culture again and they can rebuild from what they had in the league season till now. Yeah. The opportunity is definitely there for um Simeone to prepare long term since it seems like they've moved out the players that he didn't want so far. So um, yeah. now it's the best time to kind of focus on what the goal is for next year. And if we see a very good Atletico next year, I won't be too surprised. Yeah. At the same time, the habit of not finishing chances, maybe. <laughs> I feel it's only going to be addressed with the signing. Yeah, because yeah, right. sometimes the lack of finishing is not going to be rewarded by... You know how, like, you say your XG is going to be rewarded or something like... Yeah. With some players of a certain ability, it's not going to be rewarded, so you need signings. Yeah, like, I, Morata is a good player. I really like Morata, but I feel Atletico need um, a, a, a really good nine, like a nine, like, let's say, for example, Marcus Teram, who might be... He might be on his way to Bayern Munich, who knows, but, like, he's free next season and a guy like that who can come in and like who can be a finisher and that's what they that's what they're really missing that mm-hmm. key player because Barca Benzema um Barca Benzema I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> Barca Benzema Roma should have Benzema I mean if Benzema plays like he did on Sunday then we have him <laughs> <laughs> yeah my bad by that, but like Atleti, they don't they have more mm-hmm. who is in the same level as those two players. Mm-hmm. And they need that and they need that extra step up. And maybe they can get that with selling Felix and using the money to buy a player like that in the market because a player like that is like 
100 million or 80 million at least yeah but that depends on a lot, a lot of things that we can't go into today yes like and felix himself yeah it really depends and but let's talk about sasuna it's been a great week for them despite this result and the results last week they are into the semi-finals for the first time in about 18 years of the Copa del Rey. Yeah, the last time they were in the semi final, I think they lost to Betis in that final, right? Yeah, they did lose to Betis. Okay, yeah, it's been it's been really good for them beating Sevilla, and even though they took it to extra time, they were able to eventually do it and beat Sevilla for the second time this season. <laughs> yeah, I could but, tell it was coming. <laughs> yeah, I could tell it was coming because even before Sevilla scored the quarter, like. Osasuna had so many counter-attacking chances that Abdi and Budimir were failing to finish, but fair play to Abdi, he was able to um, send the Basque side into the semi-final, and they have a very, I mean, the best draw they could possibly get. Yeah. Because at least if they... I think, though, between them and Athletic, I feel they're both similar type of teams. Like, they're both... Although Athletic have the more flamboyant players, I feel... The difference isn't that high that Osasuna couldn't maybe get yeah. to the final. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not that high. And over two legs, there's definitely an opportunity. Is the first leg in El Sadar or... That I wouldn't know, but we'll get back to you next week. <laughs> Let me quickly check it. Yeah, but, but on Osasuna, though, like, how have you been impressed with Abde's performance? Because like in this game against Atleti, in the game against Sevilla, he got the final goal. And I thought it was really good on Sunday. Yeah, he's, he's improving bit by bit. I feel like he's a talented player, but he can still be very raw sometimes. So hopefully, it seems he's getting more game time, which is thanks to his good form. So hopefully, he can develop into a more decisive player. Because since we've sold Memphis, we'll definitely need like a sixth forward option. So maybe him coming back on loan, coming back from his loan next year will be like a signing. Yeah, it'll be a sign in. And he could definitely play on that left side and be very dangerous mm-hmm. with Dembele. I, I, like, Abdi on the left, Dembele on the right. Like, that seems like torture for <laughs> the wingers. Yeah. And Abdi has something that our other wingers minus Dembele doesn't have. And that that's like this change of pace and just trickery. I thought Rafinha had it, but I was. I was I was lied to. <laughs> I was lied to by Premier League talks. <laughs> yeah, you can't do it in the cold nights in Hetafe. Eh? Nah, we're not. Play, we've not played Hetafe away yet. Yeah, oh, sure. Oh no. <laughs> but I mean, all parts of Rafinha. I hope he, Fatia, and Ferran can step up. Yeah, the thing with Rafinha is, I have a feeling that if he does stay next season, he'll be a very good player. I, yeah, I, I feel the, so too. I just feel the move is like so. Big, big for him yeah. because he's like come to the club of his life and it's like a bit too much and he's going from struggling for relegation playing against Inter Milan in the Champions League mm. so yeah and, and hopefully it comes good yeah what else can I explain first or second oh, so soon, eh? yeah we have to find out whether they're playing first or second in the couple oh, of oh yeah yeah they're, they're, they have they're also there first oh that, that, that's tough for that I was thinking if you if you need to come back or like the ties level, you could do a Valencia did next year and bring it back to my start, bring it back to the home stadium. But yeah, it should be a good game to watch, honestly. Yeah, it should be. Osasuna are one of the high performers in La Liga, like who are performing. The other one is Rayo Vallecano, and they beat the Arial. And I was listening to my commentator, and it's like this is the first time Rayo has beaten the Arial since guess when. I was listening to the same commentator by yeah. early 2000s. Yeah, yeah, 2000, 2001. That's incredible. And do you know what happened in 2000, 2001? Valencia were in the Champions League final. <laughs> no, no. Right, we were in Europe. They were? Yeah, they were in Europe. I mean, I was a year old. I can't exactly yeah. remember that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah. it goes well for them. Yeah, it really does. And what do you think is the key for Raya? Because last season, we're raving about them. But like last season, they had home games that were very achievable and they did really well. And then they collapsed towards the end of, this, of last season. But this season, they've 
taking points against Villarreal, Sevilla, Atletico and Barcelona away from home. They've beaten mm-hmm. Valencia and Real Madrid at home. What makes Rayo so special? I feel in comparison to last thing, like they've is it's just the experience of the first division and they've added quality on top of that. Isi Palazon has really come into his own his own as a first division player. You have Camillo as well, one one of the surprises of the season, just banging in goals from different places and keeping Falcao and Raul de Tomas out of the team. Yeah, who would have seen that coming? Like eight goal involvement so far this season. Mm-hmm. And he's only, and I think he'll only get better. So we'll see how that, de- how like the front, the forward situation develops here. I have a question. Like, just to go back to Atleti for a moment. If you're Atleti, do you take him back for next season? And he's, do you make him your striker? Because we're saying that he can only get better. Like, he already has five goals and three assists mm-hmm. this season. Like, if you, if he's playing for Atleti, do you see him like multiplying those numbers? I, I, it's possible, but we can never really tell. I guess at Rayo, he has a more relaxed environment to grow in without like having the pressure to send his team to Champions League or something. Uh, yeah. I mean, we'll see by the end. By the end of the season, I'll be able to answer better. If, if he gets into double digits, I'd say he could do a job for Atleti. And, and for Rayo, this season might be a start because they could get into Europe. The pathway is there for them to get into Europe. Mm-hmm. Is that a good thing for a club like Rayo Vallecano, though? Given the off the field issues, yeah, it, it should. It kind of like it should be a good thing. Maybe it's well, it can be a bad thing given the ownership. Yeah, the ownership can turn a good thing into a bad thing. Yeah, that's my worry, though, because it's like, like we know with this league, right, if you have, let's say if you're a team like Raya and you have a bad transfer window, a moment's notice you could be competing for the relegation and mm-hmm. trying to survive. And if you're Raya, like, it's hard to survive if you're in that kind of situation. And you look yeah. at the type of owner that they have, and I'm not sure whether he would make the right investments to, for them to manage, like, Thursday and Sunday football, even if they're in the conference league, which is... For all intents and purposes, it's slightly easier than the Europa League, but it's still a big ask for the squad, I think. Yeah, you'd have to, the owners would have to invest a lot. But yeah, it remains to be seen whether they'll do that or not. Uh, yeah, like I'll just give you one tip into what the owners are like. Rayo are the only La Liga team without online ticketing. So it tells you all you need to know about the owners. So I doubt they'll be investing anytime soon. <laughs> Yeah. Pep yeah. Chavaria in the conference league. I'll be there no matter what. <laughs> Rowdy to master banging those goals. Eh? No, I'm talking about their second string. Yeah, yeah they don't, I mean, if they get into Europe, they need to beef that squad up. Like, just grab any good mid-table or you player you can get. Yeah, especially since Frank Garcia might be heading back to Real Madrid next season. Mm-hmm. Like, very little because we're interested in him, but Real Madrid decided to activate his buy clause apparently so he can stay in Raya for the rest of the season. And that, that'll be a huge loss for them. Yeah, and that'll be a big loss given how they play with their fullbacks. So I'm sure, given Real Madrid's actions, we'll probably be looking to replacements. I mean, there's some good left backs if certain teams get relegated. So. <laughs> Yeah, there will be. And speaking of like teams with bad owners, we're going to switch up to the relegation battle where there's some big games and possibly none bigger in the drop zone than Bayer the lead versus Valencia. Carl Lahren, the Canadian top scorer, was making his debut for Real Bayer the lead. And what a dream debut. He came off the bench and he scored brilliantly to send Bayer the lead to ecstasy and Gattuso to the streets. <sighs> yeah. To be more accurate, Lim sent Gattuso to the streets by lying yeah. to him. <laughs> yeah, the, let, let, let's be good first with, before we get into the bad of Valencia. Like, the good for Real Barrio the lady is that like everyone and their mother was saying that they needed a striker. They were begging for a striker. Yeah. And Lauren, he was disappointed in Belgium, but he had good numbers in Turkey. 
and he comes in and he scores a really good goal. And Machis, the other on the other hand, who sends him across, it was like we know him well from his time in La Liga, and he comes in and he does really well as well. And I kind of I kind of missed that sign. So when I saw him, I was like, wow, this guy's only really trying to stay up because Machis on his own will win them points, and then we had Larry. You know, if he can kick on and produce goals too, they can definitely stay up just about. Because in other parts of the pitch, I think they're quite okay. Yeah. Okay, so time to go on a rant. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Peter Lim, Peter Lim, Peter Lim, Peter Lim. Where do I start? Uh, we can start with Marcelino, you know, but that let's start cool. somewhere. <laughs> There's only one place to start. Vora back again. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Every must be, time must be getting tired. At some point, maybe Vora can be like Valencia's Emmanuel Aguasil, where he just stays and he. I don't like just, let them just give. And the thing is that Vora has been there too intermittently for me to actually judge how good he is as a manager. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, maybe just I'm hearing that. They don't have the finances to get an iron major or something, or whether the league won't let them. I really don't know, but like, if that's the case and they can't get an iron major, maybe stick with Voro and you know see if he's any good. Yeah, the thing with Voro is, I feel like Aguasil will rouse his step before he actually accepted the job. Like, he loves the club, he loves working at the club, he's mm-hmm. been in the club for ages. And he's sort of scared that, like, if I do take this role permanently and he sack me, my relationship at the club might be ended. True. I mean, honestly, you'd have to be a foolish man to take the Valencia job at this point. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, it's, that's just the sad truth. No, because the thing is, let's, let's go through all the managers. Because since Marcelino left, Marcelino, who did a tremendous job to make Valencia a top four team, a team that was beginning to separate themselves from. The other 16 teams in the league, and at that point, you could have said that Valencia could have gone on to do what Sevilla has done recently in, in terms of winning in Europe or even being close to challenging the league. He decides that Marcelino talks too much for his own good and he decides to sack him. A manager who did exactly what you wanted him to do, gave you a trophy, got the fans off your back, gave you consistent Champions League football, and he said, you don't want him because he talks too much. You bring in Celades without experience. He does okay, but you don't reinforce the team. Abi Gracia, the same thing. The team goes weaker and weaker. We're bored at last. You get a final. Fine. The depletion in the second half of the season wasn't good for the club. But at least you could tell that there was something going on there. Mm-hmm. You sell Guedes. You sell Sal Soler. You bring Gattuso. He's doing a, an okay job. He starts well, but you don't give him the reinforcements he needs. And... There's only so much you can do with a team like this. And when you look at around at other La Liga clubs and you see how they were enforced, like Denis Suarez might go to Espanyol. Mm-hmm. Espanyol brings in Montes, who's going to be very good for them. Uh, Vidali just brings in Machis and Kyle Lahren. And I, I think they brought in the third player, but I forget the name. Uh, Amaria brings in Luis Suarez from, um, um, from Marseille. Sevilla, they, they brought in uh, Hill. They brought in Gay. They brought back Lucas Ocampos. A lot of these teams who are around Valencia, Cadiz as well, or Jamarti is, is a decent sign, although it didn't work out for Elche. They're making really good signings that work for them. And then you look at Valencia and it's like no signings. And this is a team that's going downhill. And this is a manager that when he goes to Singapore, you have your arms around him. You're saying that things have changed. You want to be close to the manager. <laughs> and then you let him down this way. Like this is, it's so asinine. It's, it, it makes my head turn. Yeah, I'm looking at the picture of Gattuso having his arms around Lim. I'm like, I'm looking at Lim's hand to see if there's a knife there. <laughs> was, I mean, I mean, the, the knife he's been using to stab managers in the back should have been dulled by now, <laughs> given how long he's done it. And the thing, though, it's not just the managers, because, like, what does this tell about other promises that Lim and Meriton are making? Because right now, they they said, like, since they got in, they have no money for the stadium to build a new stadium, the new Mestaya. Mm. They have the money now with CDC, regardless of what anyone thinks about the agreements. Um, the city council have given them permission. So how can we trust a management team like that when they don't even give the manager who the fans really like, the players mm-hmm. they really like, 
Yeah, they exactly. themselves they said they really like and they said that it was going to be the person to lead Valencia to the next um, generation and everything. And they don't give him the faith. They they allow him to collapse. And he has shown that he's a good manager. He has given a demonstration, especially in, in Arabia, about how good this team can be if they give him the tools that he needs. But he's playing with 19-year-old kids. Like, you can't not... It, it's... it's uh, I feel you, man. <laughs> Having bad owners and presidents can be a pain. It can be. It couldn't be me anymore, though. But <laughs> I, 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 I someone. Porta. <laughs> no, no. Laporta might be incompetent at times, but he does not actively seek to destroy the club like Bartomeu and Lim. Yeah, true. And, like, and I do you know Barca's like the guy was actually. Helping Laporta to move. Ah, Aleman, yeah, Aleman is the MVP for Barcelona. It's not Laporta, no matter how much he wants to do photo ops. And, and he Lim, was at Valencia. Yeah, he was at Valencia, and Lim stabbed him at the back. The guy who brought them back to where they were meant to be. It's, oh. it's annoying. It's really annoying. It's, oh, it makes my blood boil. One man's mix is another man's poison. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, honestly, like if you now look at the table, Valencia. Despite the fact that they've had a relatively good season, uh, a point above the relegation zone. Oh, yeah, they game in hand, but it's against Real Madrid. It's Real Madrid, yeah. And, and the, the thing is, like, before the international break, a lot of Valencianismo were thinking, okay, maybe this year we can make Europe. We're just three points away from Europe, and now it's... <laughs> we're, we have to think about, like... They're thinking about... Uh, they're thinking world. about... Um, <laughs> we... we should, about I think you're me to Zaragoza. <laughs> I was going to say Malaga, but then yeah. they look like they're. Yeah, huh? yeah getting smacked by Andorra is not is not sweet, man. Yeah, I was hoping. I, I was thinking we might get Sevilla Depot next year, but <laughs> <laughs> that Depot Valencia game. Yeah, Depot. Would, Valencia. would, would I would I be there? <laughs> Uh, that that Depor Valencia, Racing, Zaragoza, Malaga. <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah. just big Spanish clubs just in the mud. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the good thing though is that Segunda is free to watch, so and the course is quite good, so <laughs> it'll be an easy transition. <laughs> yeah, as long as you have your right VPN. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let, let's transition to Sevilla, because they're another big team that might go down. And in a city, they keep trying to sell this guy, but he, he refuses to leave. He refuses. The PowerPoint is funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like he scores a brace and then he celebrates with the badge. I'm like, yeah, this guy doesn't want to go anywhere. <laughs> he will score against us as soon as in the midweek. Yeah, do you know who scored the most goals in Spain since the year started? It's... It's him, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's including Copa del Rey games, which, there's, let's be honest, there's some farmers he scored against, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, um, well, at least, as a viewer of the games, it's better than seeing Rafa Mir play. So please, Anesri, I'm pleading your case for you, stay. Stay. <laughs> Yeah, like he's been like we during the World Cup we we bantered about how a lot of these severe players were 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 in teams that were winning and they were getting to semifinals and finals. Mm-hmm. But now it seems like that has really helped them because the World Cup players are actually coming clutch for Sevilla. Like yeah, Acuna. You know, yeah, Acuna was he's been amazing, and Sevilla wants to sell him for some reason. I mean, they saw a lack of commitment to the club by <laughs> not playing ninety minutes at all until. Was it the World Cup round of 16 or quarterfinals that he had his first 90 minutes yeah. of the season? But, I mean, now that he's achieved his dream and everything, he's bowling, you know, Papu is back now, maybe. I feel like that will be a huge boost because he's been completely missing in action. Yeah. And also the signings they've made. And like you said, you were you got annoyed with the fact that um, Oliver Torres was always playing the right winger and... Um, Lamella left, left wing, left Rafa right. Mir left wing sometimes, or just Rafa Mir being on the pitch full stop. Yeah, but now there's Ocampos is there. Mm-hmm. There's going to be Suso on the left, uh, 
Brian Hill can play on the left. Like it seems like we're getting a more recognizable Sevilla, and they mm-hmm. should push up to the table. Yeah, definitely. Given how jump out everything is, they keep winning their home games. At least their home form has improved. Yeah. If they keep doing that, then they'll climb up the table. Yeah, and it's been three wins in their last four games. Granted, like the three wins have been at home, but that's something that you need if you're fighting against a drop. You need to be strong at home, and that's something that Sevilla didn't have that made me a bit worried for them. Mm-hmm. But now I'm seeing that improvement, and I, I think they'll be fine given they have a world class manager or a very good manager. They have mm-hmm. really good players who aren't that bad compared to what they were last year. And you, you can only see improvements for them, so I. I don't think there'll be any trouble. But we have to bear in mind that while the one three nil, it was <laughs> against LK. <laughs> we're, we're, we're effectively a second team at this point. Honestly, second teams look better than <laughs> them. <laughs> because it'll take a miracle. Like LK will need to be as good as Villarreal has been in the first half of the season to stay up. Even better. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a matter of if this is going to be historic relegation or not. Yeah. It is sad because you didn't see them sinking this bad last season. This looked, I, I, I mean, they, they survived last season, but they didn't look like a team that survived by limping over the line. No, but I, the thing is, though, is I feel that was in terms of performance. They were performing really well, but I'll say, do, does Elche have the weakest squad in La Liga? Yes, they do. And the fact that they've not had a proper manager has like really shown that because um, Ma- uh, Machine, I'll give him, I'll give him some time because he just came in. But why go back to Almiron? I think that's what killed them. Going back to Almiron, a guy who before he got sacked, he didn't win like a game in fourteen games in La Liga, mm-hmm. and you go back to him and you wonder why this team is like going down like a stone. Yeah, uh, I'm. I mean, their squad is. Definitely the weakest leg, but I didn't think it was that weak. It's, I didn't think it's like that. It's not miles worse than the 19th weakest squad or anything. No, no, it, it's not. But it's, it's just a matter of confidence, right? Because mm-hmm. when you go through like huge runs without winning games and you start to play games and it feels really heavy for the players. Like every touch feels heavy and stuff. It's like when you're in FIFA and you go on that run <laughs> and all of a sudden your players can't make a pass. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel that's what's going on with Alche. And um, I, I, I think they'll be okay if they go down. But also it's like one of those things where the owner, instead of like thinking about his club, was in Qatar, like celebrating players because Argentina won the World Cup. And yeah, it's, it's really frustrating for them in the century mm-hmm. here. It's quite sad that they're going to go down, but mm-hmm. here we are. Yeah, they're just like... And here I was thinking they might actually beat Sevilla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not Sevilla. They look like they're on their way up. But, uh, well, I think this game just shows the contrast between the two clubs right now. Yeah, it really does. Let, let's move on to another Andalusian team who had a great weekend, and that was Almeria. And Almeria, they enforced the law of the X because Ruby was the former manager of Espanyol. Mm-hmm. And uh, Leo Baptista was a former striker for Espanyol. And Dier Baba was at Espanyol last season and he, he won man of the match. <laughs> and he feels like a poor old Espanyol because Almeria just tore them apart from minute one. Yeah, it was a very good attacking display from Almeria. I, they, I think they win all their home games 3 1 at this point. <laughs> uh, they, they can't keep clean sheets, so that guaranteed. That it was going that it was going to end at least three one. Yeah. But yeah, but it, it's it's really good for them because they're one of the teams that we were unsure about and now halfway into the season. Oh I was sure about them. I said they'd finish dead last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look how stupid I look now. <laughs> yeah. And it's I, I feel they, they have the players who really like maybe fall from the second half of the season. We'll see we'll see if that happens, but I, yeah, I really I think, like what I saw. I think they'll finish like maybe twelfth or something. I don't know where they are now. Yeah. I believe they're they're around that. It's it's a model league, right? So but let's let's quickly talk about Espanol. Um 
Diego Martinez said this was the worst performance of the season, and I would have to agree with him more randomly because I, I really didn't see Espanol in that game. Like, yeah. They were, they were nowhere to be found. Yeah, Dardar also literally laid into himself and the team and said that's the worst game they've played all season. He said he, he didn't think it was Almeria's best game of the season, but they didn't need to be at their best. <laughs> and this is just like a slap in the face to Espanol, Espanol fans because the team has actually been on a good run recently. So to have it end like this is kind of like a dampener morale. Yeah, it really is. But if they do get Dennis Suarez over the line, how big of an impact do you think that's going to make for them? I won't say they particularly need Dennis Suarez because they have Darda. Darda does the work of two midfielders essentially. <laughs> And then um, Vinny Sousa is doing really well. The Expositor is doing well. They're not the only in La Liga. It's so, great. So what do they need, though? Like, because they, all the players must not be doing well for them to be where they are. I mean, they, they can defend better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Mont- Montez has definitely made some strength in them but then you know I guess they'll just have the odd game like this where they just have a bad day but overall I think they'll be fine especially if they're adding Dennis to maybe ease off ease take some burden off Darder. Yeah. Let's move on to another Andalusian victory with Cadet and Cadet they they won Cruiser against Mallorca. Mallorca their team that I think maybe they're not in trouble right now but we should keep an eye out for. Yeah, I think they'll be all right there. There's enough of a gap between them and the but and the struggles. It's just points, six points. Given the fact that Valencia are a point above, I still think they'll be fine. They'll be fine. <laughs> but um, listen, I feel like if Marichi doesn't start scoring soon, then you can start worrying about them, but I feel for now they're fine, because they're still winning their home games, at least. Yeah, they're, they're still winning them, and Cardiff, this was their first, their second home win, I think, since they beat Atletico. Mm-hmm. And, and ever since that, they went on that five-game run where they didn't win, and then they scored. <laughs> I think they've actually been really good since, barring that 5-1 against Barry Vitano, but that scoreline is a bit deceptive, because they had two players sent out. But they've been decent. They've been. They've looked pretty good. And I, I, I know last week I said that I'm happy with the bottom three as is. But if I could pick someone out of the bottom three now that might stay up, I, I do think they, they're a team in the upward trajectory. And I really like what Sergio has done. Yeah, they're, they're, they're in a role. And they've made new signings too um, with Roger Marti doing basically Lucas Perez and leaving <laughs> Elche to come to Cadiz. They um strengthening midfield with Mbai and then um, Theo Bongonda is finally coming good too. So it's definitely optimism for Kansas to stay up. I, I still think they'll go down if I think it's between them and Hetafe. If Hetafe can get their act together, they have a squad that should stay up with a degree of comfort. So I think it's between them and River Dilly, but it's, an, it's a very weird season, honestly. Sevilla and Espanol might be back down there soon. <laughs> soon. Yeah, who knows? Uh, let, let's go on to Celta, though. Yeah, Glasgow is always there for them. Yeah. Um, another important goal is ninth of the season. He could do it some help, I can't lie. <laughs> like, after the game, he's like, if I could sign someone, I'd sign Messi and Ronaldo. <laughs> Now, I have something to say. I'm like, Aspas, have you seen Ronaldo play recently? <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear to Cristiano, he had to catch that streak. <laughs> yeah, but, even, but, even in Saudi, he still can score goals. Even in Saudi, he still can score goals. <laughs> uh, that's enough before you lose Ronaldo fan, boys. <laughs> yeah. But uh, as Celta needs some help because Aspas can't do this all by himself, even though he's still doing a pretty good job. Like, like, what do we think of Larson? Because every time I see the player, I think this is a good player there, but he just needs confidence. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't look confident at all. No. Do you think in the window, Celta should get a third strike, another striker, because they have 
um, Larson, they have Paciencia. And do you, do you think they need another one? Or do you think that might be a bit of an issue for the confidence of the other strikers? I mean, since they're selling tennis, I feel they could do it a, a white player to like contribute for maybe from the left hand side because right now they're playing um, they're playing um Delatore there and he's a more of a central midfielder so yeah. I feel if they can get any good white player that would be nice but yeah and I think there's only one or two days of the window left right yeah, yeah. we'll see we'll see the madness uh, and also they need to get Carlos Perez to stop shooting so much like he doesn't have that in He's not that good. He's, He's not that good. And so, but let, let's talk about athletic because, the first of all, um, Iñaki Williams' uh, long, long record, 250-something games of consecutively playing, is over, sadly. Pain. <laughs> but then the struggles in La Liga continues. It, it's contrasting with Copa del Rey because they had a very good performance against Valencia. It, it is Valencia, only Valencia at the moment. We have to say that. But they're doing well in the Copa in the semi-final, but in La Liga, they've not won since the return. Yeah. I mean, and so I heard they started Munyain, but I'm like, you didn't start Sunset, and I started Dani Garcia. And I'm, I'm, for me, I'm like, for them to get back to their best, they need to put all their attacking weapons on the pitch at once instead of just mising them and just playing them one at a time. Yeah, because that's what they were doing well, doing well at, at the start of the season. Yeah, and it's weird though, because like I remember when we the league first came back, and we're like, okay, they're they're in fourth, and the reason why I think they might stay there is because they have no distractions, mm-hmm. and it's surprising that with the amount of rotations that's gone on, given they they haven't played in Europe recently, they have very few distractions. So why why is it that Valverde is rotating so much? No bloody idea, man. <laughs> Only Valverde knows. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I guess you're having like flashbacks from his Barca days. He, he, from his Barca days, the problem was that he did rotate a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's rotating weirdly. I would say he's rotating too much. He's just rotating in a weird way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True, true. But let, let's let's now look at the table. Like Barca went to champions. Congratulations, Oscar. Nah, it's not enough. Not <laughs> so much champions. Too. Yeah, yeah, good. So many champions. I can see Russell said that they're very close to Real Madrid, but we we think Real Madrid might increase that to a six point gap when they play Valencia. Let's see. They are. They are. I don't think so. You don't think so? You think Valencia can take them? Then? I think Valencia will win. Yeah, listen. My my philosophy is it doesn't hurt to be positive. Like <laughs> I, I don't believe in going with the green and giving the same old boring prediction. So Valencia two on win tomorrow. Oh sorry, Thursday. Okay. Do, do you know do you know what? You've inspired me and let's go bold here. LK will get their first win against Villarreal. <laughs> You know what? I can see that happening. It's like a derby, right? Yeah. At LG. It's yeah. possible. Yeah. It's unlikely, but it's possible. But it's possible. <laughs> but, but which one is more unlikely? LG getting a point. Sorry, let me. LG scoring a goal or Valencia getting a point at the Bernabeu. Uh, you know what? I'll say the point is possible. If because there's that new manager bounce, it seems like Real Madrid have been lacking aim, and um, Mamadash really is a much much better goalkeeper than Ramiro. So, uh, but it's just Valencia makes so many stupid mistakes at the back. So, yeah, and while the manager is gone, Valencia did take Madrid to penalties less than a month ago. So yeah. they've shown they have it in them. Yeah, yeah, they really have, and. It, and if you just to take a look at that bottom table, like between Armory and Catafe, it's five points. Like it's it's a war in that, like three points between Cadiz and Almeria. That's it's crazy. Yeah. It's gonna be a crazy ride. And not not fun for people that the clubs are involved in, but 
for the rest of the league, it's going to be interesting to see this battle. Yeah, I f- I felt like the, this bottom half might clear up a bit after 19 games, but it just got worse. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I'm going to give it. I'd be shocked if by March the 30 we have 12 teams that are st- sorry, eight teams that are still not sure about themselves. Yeah, like, like at this by this moment, right? That, that's that's the point I'm trying to make. If any, like. Is there an argument to sack any manager if you're between Cadiz and or Hetafe and Almeria? Because the, all the manager needs is two or three results and is flying away from relegation trouble. Or flying into relegation trouble. Yeah, yeah that, that, that is. Okay, let, let me see. There's no need for Michel for Jonathan to sack Michel. Like, the fact that they've backed him with signing Collins and Shigankov shows that they are fitting him. Um, Sevilla, San Paoli just got there and they seem to be doing better. Valencia just, their manager basically quit. So, <laughs> 15th, it's his first season for um, Diego Martinez and they've made signings. So, yeah. they aren't in, I don't think they sack him even if they're in relegation trouble. Yeah, and I think they've acknowledged the fact that they messed up and mm-hmm. they've, they've at least given him some signings to work with, unlike Dutch's case. Yeah, so I think it's fine. Yeah. Um, Celta is a weird one because Celta have improved recently, but because it's so tight down there, they're not. Yeah, so Pacheta, I don't know how he, they, um, they've not sacked him yet. <laughs> like, I like especially I going five games without even scoring a goal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but that, that win gives him so much power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of confidence now. Yeah. For Sergio of Cadiz, Cadiz, I can see him staying to the end of the season and yeah. maybe getting sacked at the end if they get relegated. Yeah. But by that point, does it make sense though? Like, you might as well give him, if, as, if it's not a big contract, which I, I don't think he is, like, you might as well mm-hmm. give him, like, Segunda mm-hmm. to get back up and stick with the same type of players because of his partial payments as well. So, yeah. And then Hetafe, if they sack Kike Sanchez Flores anytime soon, I won't be surprised. Yeah, I probably yeah. think the replacement scares me though. I, I really like him, but like he's I, I think <laughs> who's the replacement? It might be Bern Schuster. Come in. Bern Schuster is like uh he used to coach Real Madrid and he coached. Oh Madrid. sure. Oh the German guy. Yeah. You know, that's a kind of outlandish um what do you call it? Um, appointment that makes me think they might go down because <laughs> I don't think I'd have to look at his managerial CV, but I don't think his managed teams are struggling to stay up. Uh, he's done it once in Malaga. He's done it once in Malaga, but like his style of football is so dark. <laughs> yeah, we like, don't need any more of that in the league. Yeah, and it, he hasn't managed in I believe six or seven years, and that's such a risk when you bring in someone like that. <laughs> Yeah, maybe those six or seven years he might have learned a few things. Yeah, and they're better off bringing Bordelas back. <laughs> yeah, 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 they really are. I, I also don't want to see that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But Oscar, before before we leave, I'm just going to give you now. It's time to make your prediction. So top four and bottom three, go. Top four: Barca, Real Madrid, Real Sociedad. Mm. And Atleti. And Atleti. Bottom three. <laughs> um, LJ for sure. <laughs> Cadiz and River the lead. River the lead. Oh man, mine will be Barca, Madrid, Atletico, and we also say that I think Atletico will get third. Um, bottom three. Oh, this is tough. LJ obviously. Cadiz and um, yeah, Vardy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe that is a one game wonder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll see. And if you want to find out whether Lyon is a one game wonder, you know where to find out on this podcast. Uh, with that, thanks for coming on, Oscar, and uh, thank you, listener, for listening so far. And I hope you enjoyed our. And a half, half midway point, midway review of La Liga.
and hope you have a lovely week.